I have been teaching on the words joy and peace. The Bible teaches that joy and peace are the fruit of the true born-again believer. Many people say they know God, but do they have joy and peace in their hearts? The Lord Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees were telling the Lord that they knew God. And the Lord Jesus said to them, It is funny that you say no, you know God, but you don't know me. And this is exactly what is happening today. Many people say they know God, but for some reason they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And thus, if they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, then the joy and peace that the Bible is talking about will be absence from their heart. The joy and peace that the Bible talks about brings forth fruit of righteousness in a person. We do not have to make laws, rules, and regulations on how to be a Christian. We are one by nature. Once the Holy Spirit has placed that joy and peace within our hearts that comes when we become born again. Today I want to speak on the subject on how to achieve that joy and peace. I know there are so many Christians who are troubled when they hear to somebody talking about the reality of that peace in their heart. They know they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but somehow that peace and joy is missing. I want to speak today on how to dig and seek for that joy and peace. And the Holy Spirit, which loves us, who created us, will bring that joy and peace to your heart and to your soul. But before we get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name, and I pray, O oh God, that the power of your Spirit will rest upon this message so that people will understand and seek thy face, O oh God. I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that we can trust in your word. I ask you to bless us today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The disciples, after the crucifixion, were gathered together, and they were troubled. They, were, they knew the Lord has been crucified, and he had been laid in the grave. And the Lord God showed himself to them. But there was one person missing, and that was Thomas. That's the, yes, the doubting Thomas we all talk about. And he had said that he will not believe that Jesus rose from the dead till he reaches his finger into the scars of the Lord, nail-scarred hands of the Lord Jesus Christ and touches his side. Well, when the Lord Jesus finally saw Thomas, he said to him, Reach thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and trust it into my side and be not faithless but believe and thomas answered and said unto him my lord and my god jesus said unto him thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed this is a beautiful verse of scripture because there are so many people who dare to believe today, even though their eyes are not fully open, their understanding hasn't been open, but they dare to believe. They are almost like the father who brought a, a child that was demon-possessed to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is found in Mark chapter 9, verse 24, where he tells the Lord, Thy disciples could not... Bring that evil spirit out of my child. And the Lord Jesus Christ said to him in verse 23 of chapter 9, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. This is 
a beautiful scripture for all those people who are throttened down in their belief when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ because there are many who are confused. They don't quite understand the gospel, but they dare to believe that Jesus saved them even though they sometimes have to hang on for dear life. Well, there is a scripture in Matthew chapter 13, 46. It talks about the person who went and looked for a pearl. And when he found that pearl, he went and sold everything he had so that he could buy that pearl. I want to ask you today, those of you who don't quite believe that they are safe and secure in the arms of Jesus, you don't quite believe that you're born again. You are struggling with that subject. Well, the Bible has an antidote for your unbelief. It talks about this merchant finding a, a great pearl. And a lot of people have found the Lord Jesus Christ, but for some reason they just quite cannot believe that the Lord will save them. What did that merchant do when he found that great pearl, that pearl of great price? He went and sold everything he had so that he could purchase that pearl. And this is the problem with a lot of people today. They do not want to sacrifice everything they have so that they can have that pearl of great Price. Many people are not quite willing to sell everything they have. They don't want to get rid of everything so that they can purchase that pearl of great price. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ said, You can only serve God. Either you serve God or you serve mammon. And mammon can be any form. It can be religion. It can be money. It can be some secret sin of your heart. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ asks us to sell everything that we have so that we can purchase that pearl of great price. How many Christians today are full of joy and peace. There are quite a few who know what it means to say that they know that they're saved and truly mean it. How many Christians, though, on the other hand, who call themselves Christians, they have accepted Jesus Christ, but when you talk to them about assurance of salvation, they're not quite sure. Could it be that you have not sold everything that you need to get rid of? Could it be that you are harboring something in your heart that the Holy Spirit sees and you do not quite want to get rid of it? Could it be that this is what's hindering you from receiving that pearl of great price and thus you do not receive the joy and the peace that comes with Christianity. The Lord is not mocked. He knows the heart of every person there is on this planet. And He will not share His glory with anybody. He will not open the eyes of those who are not willing to sell everything they have. I know there's a lot of religious systems who on the outward surface would seem as if they have sold everything they have. But in their heart there is nothing but dross and filth. Well, the Lord sees that and this is why there is no peace there. But for those of you who are seeking God's face, who are not quite sure of your salvation. There is a way to attain that pearl of great price, and that is to sell everything. That is to seek 
the face of Jesus with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and pledge your allegiance to him regardless of the cost and then the fruit of joy and peace will come upon you that like in like in a way that you have never dreamed possible yes the bible knows when it's talking about the peace that passes all understanding it knows what it talks about when it tells us that we are sanctified through the belief of the truth that is found in second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 i will read you that scriptures it tells us but we are bound to give thanks always to god brethren beloved of the lord because god had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth this is the truth that the Bible is talking about. The truth that Jesus came and died for you on the cross. But to understand and see fully the extent of your salvation, you need to sell everything you have. You need to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ has prepared a way. He tells us, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life. And what is that straight? gate and narrow way that is the born again experience but he also says but wide is, is the road broad is the road that leads to destruction and many that are upon that road those are all the religious people who by the works of the flesh are trying to appease god for their sin you will never reach paradise that way. Your road is leading to you to hell and the lake of fire. But for those who have sold everything, those who have given their lives and their heart to Jesus Christ, to them the door is open and they will walk in because this is the price they are looking for. That price of eternal life. Yes, that is the promise that the Bible makes to them that seek for the Lord God. They will surely find Him. For the Lord Jesus Christ says, He that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So, dear sinner friend, I'm asking you today, are you worried about the future? Are you worried about the things that are happening upon this planet? Well, you need not to be worried anymore. For the Lord God has made a way of escape from the tribulation, and He has also made a way of escape from the lake of fire. And that is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no safe place for anybody except in the ark which is called Jesus. Jesus came to seek and save them which are lost. And every person is lost who is born on this planet. And we all need to seek the face of the Lord Jesus Christ and repent of our sin and turn to Him for our salvation. And the Lord Jesus Christ clearly tells us he tells us the truth in the word of God. He that comes to me, I will receive and call him my brother. So have you given your life and heart to Jesus? Have you really repented from all of your unrighteousness? Have you repented from the religion that you have been living in? Or from that idea that you have been taught of how to attain eternal life. You need to turn from everything. Sell everything that you have. And turn to Jesus. And receive the pearl of great price. Yes, the Lord God has left us a word. And that word is the truth which tells us on how to be saved. Believe that word, and the truth will set you free 
from the clutches of Satan. The Lord bless you, make you a blessing, open your eyes to the fantastic truth of the gospel. I thank you for listening. The Lord bless you. Amen. When one studies the church world today, we sometimes wonder why there is so much confusion. And it is really not that hard to figure out when you really look into the matter. Because a lot of the church today is teaching cheap beliefism. Sign on the dotted line and now you are saved. Repeat after me and now you have become a Christian. This is what a lot of the church teaches today. There is no repentance when they preach the gospel. They do not seem to think that this is important anymore, that people repent from the heart. This is why we are seeing such a confused mess all over the planet. I want to read to you out of Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. It tells us the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, that which when a man has found he hides, and for joy therefore goes and sells all, sells all that he has and buys that field. Again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchantman seeking goodly pearls, who when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. We can see here what is happening. The person finds a treasure in a field that he is working. He finds that treasure and then he hides it and goes and sells everything he has and buys the field so that he can possess the treasure. And another is the, the person, the merchant who goes and he finds a pearl of great price. So he goes and sells everything he has and, and then goes to buy that pearl of great price. Does that look like a cheap way of operating? He gives his whole life, his whole heart, and his whole soul to buying that one possession. And this is how Jesus likens the kingdom of God. Why are there so many Christians who are confused today? They don't really know whether they're born again or not. They say they are Christians, but don't have the joy and the peace that comes with Christianity. There is another place when the Pharisees say to the Lord Jesus that they know God. And the Lord Jesus says to them, You say that you know God, but you don't know me? How is that possible? And this is the same thing I want to remind people who call themselves Christians today. You say that you know Jesus Christ and you don't know that you're going to heaven and you don't have the joy and the peace that the Bible talks about. What is joy and peace? It's a knowledge that your name is written in the book of life. That produces the joy and peace in a person's heart. I want to challenge you today. Are you really a born-again Christian? Do you have the joy and peace that comes from knowing that you are a Christian and that your name is written in the book of life? Do you possess that? If not, then you may have an imitation Christianity that comes through you not selling everything you have. There are a lot of religions who would place their whole life on the line by doing external things to prove to themselves and to the rest of the world that they are the people of God. But in reality, they don't know Christ. Because in their heart, they do not know Jesus. Their heart is full of dross and iniquity. 
The only way a person's heart can be cleansed is when a person out of true repentance turns to Jesus and Jesus opens his mind and enlightens his eyes to the truth and he with all his soul and all his mind and all his spirit will then turn to Jesus for that salvation. That's when the born again experience takes place. Has that happened to you? Have you sold everything that you have? Have you turned to Jesus? Is He the only one that you know can, that can save your soul from eternal damnation? If that is your claim, then the joy of peace and the Holy Spirit is yours. And you can then say that you are a child of the King. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing. Amen.